Welcome to Small Biz, Big Wins, where every episode is a new journey into the heart of entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Summer Poquette, here to navigate the thrilling world of small business with you. Each week, we dive into the inspiring stories and joyful triumphs of real business owners. Get ready to be empowered with actionable advice, and most importantly, celebrate the spirit of small business. Let's dive into how every small victory shapes your big success. This is Small Biz, Big Wins. Let's make it happen. Richard Branson once said, having a good network can be invaluable. It opens up doors for you and allows you to enter into opportunities that are beneficial to your business. And I couldn't agree more with Richard Branson. The network I built from my earlier days as a professional blogger in 2008, I am still leveraging today in 2024. Attending conferences, speaking at events, and joining local groups are ways to connect with others and grow your network. Other small business owners cannot utilize your services or recommend your business if They do not know who you are and what you do. Networking is simply marketing yourself. But this can be intimidating and it can seem overwhelming for most small business owners. But if you're not sure where to start, my advice is always to join your local chamber of commerce. This is a great first start to building your network and marketing yourself to other business owners and your local community. Today's show is dedicated to helping small business owners better understand what a Chamber of Commerce is, the types of services and programs they offer, and to help you leverage your network if you join. So I've learned over the years that there are many misconceptions about Chambers of Commerce, and most of the time, small business owners aren't taking full advantage of what a chamber has to offer. So I'm pleased today to have Sarah Van Horn, president of Charlevoix Area Chamber of Commerce, join us today on this episode of Small Biz Big Wins. If anybody knows about small businesses and how a chamber can help, it's Sarah. So thank you for joining us on the show today, Sarah. Thank you, Summer. I feel like everything you just said is probably more than I can say, so I might be done. (laughs) Oh, no, absolutely not. I know you have so much to offer. And so before we get started, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, your background, your role at the uh, Charlevoix Chamber of Commerce. Yes, perfect. I would love to. Thank you for having me. Um, So I am born and raised in Charlevoix here. So I love this community and I'm happy now to be in this position to be able to promote the community and help those that want to call it home or that have called it home and are just looking to grow and thrive as their business and their family um, here in Charlevoix. So I was born and raised here. I left for school, went to Grand Valley State to pursue a degree in hospitality and tourism management. And then returned uh, back to Charlevoix and actually started working at one of our um, larger local businesses here, Castle Farms, which is an event venue and uh, a a really good um, spot for tours and history and things like that. And I kind of was a jack of all trades there. I I did tours. I did wedding bookings. I ran weddings. I became their events director. And then I opened their wine tasting room. Mm. Um, as well. So kind of got to dabble in all the aspects of business as it comes to retail, uh, food and beverage, uh, event management, things like that. So I started there and then um, this position with the chamber came open and I actually had a little bit of um, a relationship with the chamber from the events that they held at the castle and my time there. So I saw this position open and I thought, you know, this might be an opportunity to do something bigger with, uh, with Charlevoix and really get to, instead of being involved with just one business, kind of grow and get to be involved with all the businesses. So I took a chance and I was happy that the board uh, saw that I was excited about this and um, they took a chance on me and got me into this role. And I've been here for about five years now. Amazing. So for those of you listening who are not aware, Charlevoix um, is in Northern Michigan um, and it is a resort um, community. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's right on Lake Charlevoix that connects to the um, Great Lakes. So it's, it's amazing. Um, It's an amazing community. So if you haven't visited Charlevoix, Michigan, um, make sure that you do for sure. So, so Sarah, let's start with the basics, because I feel like a lot of people do not understand or know what exactly is a Chamber of Commerce and what is the its role in a community? 
Yes. So a chamber of commerce is a membership organization. So a lot of times it can compare to an association, like a trade association. Okay. We simply don't have a specific trade or industry. We are representing the entire community, the entire business segment of where we are located. So um, our our funding comes through membership dues. Okay. Uh, businesses and members, they join and they get a handful of benefits for that. But then their dues come together to be a collective resource in employing our staff and having our office to be able to then deploy the services and, and initiatives that we do as a chamber. Got it. Is there um, a chamber in every community? So there usually is some sort of a chamber. And uh, the saying that we all like to say in the chamber world is, when you've seen one chamber, you've seen one chamber. Uh, you haven't seen them all. <laughs> okay. We're all different. Uh, okay. So every community's chamber is really a reflection of that community. So some of them, you know, Got when it. you get into a metro area, they're going to be big chambers. They're working on big, broad things because they're representing 2,000 members maybe, and they might have 15 staff people. You yeah. get into smaller communities, um, like some of our neighboring communities like Mancelona or Bel Air, uh, their chamber is, you know, maybe 100 members and they have one part-time staff person and they're just simply deploying what those businesses want to do each year. Um, okay. So our chamber, we are 400 members, we have three staff people, and we really, um, we're considered midsize in the fact that we uh, we really size-wise with our members, but then the, the efforts that we do too, we're involved in housing and workforce and trying to launch some of those bigger picture things that are going to make a community thrive. Okay. We also are doing promotions downtown and sidewalk sales and holiday parades and things that just get people here and feel good about sure. the community that they live in. Okay. And so um, is a chamber actually like, are you a for-profit, a non-profit? Are you part of a city or a downtown or a municipality? So we're kind of we are our own class of a nonprofit. It is considered a not-for-profit organization. Okay. Um, it is not the same as a 501c3 where you are ac um, able to access grants and things like that. Um, okay. We're not so much into the, you know, that type of fundraising. Um, so we're a 501c6. So we're considered a nonprofit. It is a, a, a designation for trade associations. Um, mm -hmm is under that. So we are not part of our municipalities. A lot of times uh, we partner with municipalities or our offices might be located in off, uh, municipal offices or next to municipal offices because we do a lot of work together. Uh, but we are not part of a city or funded by taxes in any way like that. Okay. I think that is a misconception a lot of people have mm -hmm. is that you are part of the downtown or part of the city or part of the, um, you know, Charlevoix County, somehow you fall mm -hmm. under that umbrella. Um, and so you're kind of saying, no, we're, we partner, we work together, but we are a separate entity. Um, yes. Okay. And yep. what, how, how do chambers, like, are you part of the United U S chamber of commerce? Like, how does that all work when you have local chambers and then you have, do you have a state chamber? Do you have a national mm -hmm. chamber? Like how, how does all that work? Yeah, it is kind of very similar to what a trade association is like. Association okay. is like we have our Charlevoix Chamber. We are part of. Uh, we are a member of the Michigan Chamber of Commerce, and the Michigan Chamber of Commerce they're based in Lansing, and they have members that are direct businesses. But then also a lot of their membership is local chambers of commerce, and we ah. go to the Michigan Chamber for some bigger, broader resources at a state level. Okay. And then we are also part of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, which um, the U.S. Chamber, you know, they have members like FedEx, Amazon, you know, some of those big companies. But then they're also made up of state chambers and local chambers as well. And they have resources for different types of things that we might need at a, a country level, too. Interesting. And so mm -hmm. what how were Chamber of Commerce has formed? Like, what was the intent? You know, how did how long have they been around? So they were formed uh, with the intent of business interest. So each community had, you know, I'll, I'll say Charlevoix's story, and I'm sure it's reflective of most chambers, how they start. You know, in 1958 is where we trace kind of the, I guess, the starts of what we currently operate as, as a chamber. Okay. Uh, before that, there were groups of people who own businesses in town. They would get together and they would say, what can we do for business in town? What does this mm -hmm. town need so that we can thrive? How can we pool our resources to do some of these things, whether that's pooling resources to promote the town at a state level or is it 
pooling resources to fix the sidewalks to make it more accessible for people to walk here. So that's kind of the formation of it is, you know, business people started getting together. How can we make this a better community for all of us? Realizing that we need resources to do that. So why don't we all pay into this and all know that this is benefiting all of us with our resources? So that's how they start. That's kind of the conception of it is business people getting together in a room, figuring out what can we do? Let's create an association around it and let's put our, our money and our time into making this a better community for all of us to thrive in. Interesting. And so do most Chamber of Commerce, as you mentioned at the beginning, that there is a board. So do Chamber of Commerce, do they operate with a board? Like you're the president and you have mm-hmm. staff and the mm-hmm. members dues are paying for, you know, the staff and everything. But mm-hmm. where does the board come in or is a, are, is a board required? Yes. Yep. So a board is required um, given that the nonprofit status, usually you have a board of volunteers that, okay. that operates, but also that's... Um, you know, the intent of a chamber is we're a voice for business. So we want to be directed by those who operate businesses. So our board of directors are dues paying members. Uh, We have election each year of people who are either interested in being on the board or people that we recruit based on what we're trying to achieve in the next few years, or just by industry as well. So, you know, with how we do it, we like to look at our industry mix and say, you know, we don't have anyone from manufacturing on our board who might be someone that can fill that role And we really look to them for their experience and their advice and their knowledge and connections, you know, and and then in return, they help, you know, at a high level govern what a chamber does. You know, they might not get into the the nitty gritty of who exactly is in the holiday parade or how exactly does how do the napkins look at the business event? But (laughs) they know, hey, we need to have these events so that we can collect people together and learn about marketing or learn about what is going on in our community. Got it. So they're they're really a governing board overseeing yes. the chamber and yep. making those decisions, which which mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. And I love how you look at the different industries and maybe, you know, OK, we have someone from the downtown that's an, in retail, but we are missing that manufacturing piece and that voice to to make sure mm-hmm. that everything is kind of equal and created equal. Yeah, so. you want to have a well-rounded board so that you're really a voice for your whole community, because if we we're only made up of retail, we're missing our restaurants, we're missing our manufacturers. And and they all operate, you know, business owners are all different and they're all facing different challenges. You know, manufacturers are facing a lot of workforce and inventory challenges mm-hmm. um, with the cost of things. And then our restaurants, you know, they're workforce, but in a different way and their mm-hmm. workers need something different. So Absolutely. It's, it's interesting to get all those voices and then that all comes together and what a chamber is meant to do, which is, you know, be that voice and and move the needle for our businesses. Yeah. And like you said, not all chambers are the same, but you guys, it, you all have the same mission. So if mm-hmm. I don't know, if I'm listening, I'm a small business owner and I don't know even where to find one, where do I start? Yeah. Um, a lot of times, most often in communities, your chamber is going to have a front facing business storefront somewhere okay. so that we can be accessible for is people. That, is that That's common? Always, is that common to have? You that? know, it's not, it, it is common. I would say okay. it's not always the case, especially with the pandemic. There are some chambers that went remote and they, oh. you know, they might be based in a community where they don't need a physical location. Sure. Um, you mentioned, you know, Charlevoix being a resort community. And yeah. I think a lot of our Northern Michigan communities are the same that we, we need to maintain that office space for a lot of our visitor traffic. But also we're, you know, a close knit small community. We like stopping in and being face to face and knowing that there's a place here that you can come to put your information out or to ask a question. There's a place you can call for that. So not every community has a a front facing one, but there's usually, yeah, you, you know, look in your phone book, look look on Google and find Chamber of Commerce and you're going to find the one that serves your area. Great. And and oftentimes, if you're you're not sure, like you could probably contact your municipality or ask a fellow mm-hmm. business owner. They they might yeah. themselves be a member of the chamber that you didn't know about. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But hopefully, you know about your chamber and you yeah. have been doing. So, if I'm a small business owner and I know my chamber exists, um, what are some benefits of joining as a small business owner? And like you said you know, it costs some money. I'm sure that there are probably every chamber, anyone listening, you know, their chamber might look a little different for membership costs. But um, tell us a little bit about some of the benefits. Yeah. So I think across the board, 
you kind of hit the nail on the head with your intro about it. You know, you're creating a network of people and you're getting your name out there and you're you're making those connections. And that's kind of the essence of what a chamber is. You know, we're coming together so that you can get to know other businesses in your area and get to know the priorities that you all share and how you can address those then moving forward. Um, so I think at its core, coming together with membership is opening you up to other members. It's opening you up to relationships and networking and making those connections so that you can refer each other and, and refer people to those services. So that's that's at its core. Um, and then, of course, every chamber probably does have a list of more tangible benefits to be able to really put that dollar to good use. Um, yeah. For us, a lot of what we do is promotional with a weekly newsletter that gets really good traction. And it's really the go-to resource for the community, whether you are a business member or a resident or someone that visits Charlevoix or wants to move here. That's kind of our, our broad audience of our newsletter. And that has information businesses can put in there. They have events coming up, if they have new programs coming up, um, or if they just have a success story that they want to get out. Mm-hmm. We really use that as, you know, this is your community. These are the businesses in your community and look at all that they're doing. And that um, that is a big thing for us that gets a lot of traction that we really like to be able to provide. Um, you know, I think other basics would be uh, online directory. So a one-stop shop of who's a business in Charlevoix. Okay. Um, an online event calendar, one-stop shop of what's going on in Charlevoix. And those are all benefits that members can take advantage of. So I could submit an event that I'm hosting. I can put my business in your directory. So if someone's looking for a marketing company, they come to the Charlevoix Chamber of Commerce, they look in the directory and they're like, oh, Keep Real Social is a, you know, um, a member and then they can contact me. So that's always a plus. And that's also great Google juice for any business because I know when you're searching in you know a certain area and you look for a business, oftentimes a chamber directory will come up right away. Um, with mm-hmm. businesses listed. So, and then it's, it's, it's a, yeah. Huge, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a great resource. It is. It's funny you say that. Cause we get um, several phone calls of people thinking they're calling the business when they're calling us because, you know, you Google it and our listing on our website comes up and the yeah. way that, you know, your phone pulls up the screen, it says yep. call now and it calls the chamber and oh, that's you know, funny. people call us mean, hi, I'd like make an appointment for, you know, I appointment or I'd like to talk to my accountant and it's like, oh, you know, you called the chamber, but let me direct you to that person. Yeah. Which is a testament to the yes. directory working for sure. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And then the the newsletter, um, because you know, we're members and we put our information in the newsletter, but we see the events that are happening in the community. Now, this newsletter is not just for chamber members, like community members subscribe and get this mm-hmm. newsletter. So that information is reaching, you know, your business information is reaching and touching the entire community, not just fellow business owners. Exactly. Yep. Um, especially ours, you know, we have over 1500 subscribers and that's, you know, about the population of the city of Charlevoix. So, you know, it's reaching more than just yeah. businesses and, and uh, Absolutely. yeah, and it's a lot of people that summer up here and are just want to stay in touch with what's going on. So the, the ability yeah. to put the information in there is a benefit to members, but then the information goes out to such a broad reach. It really is a, a good yeah. Spot. Mm-hmm. And if you think about what your member dues are and you think about if you were to put something in every newsletter, the cost of that, breaking it down is really minimal. Yeah, Yeah, we like to think so. I think it it really is how do we take – and, you know, that's the power of the chamber is that, you know, that one member's dues, but you're pairing it with every membership coming together to then be able to house that newsletter, house that website. And, you know, we can't do that with one membership dues, but we can do that with the whole collective of us being able to be here and manage that and get all that information out there. Absolutely. And your member dues are paying for the person to put in that content, to design that content, to use the newsletter service Mm -hmm. and to really have it grow those legs. It can't do it on their, on its own. So, and the more member dues you have, the more the more you can do as a chamber. Correct. Yep. And the more, you know, yeah, the newsletter is just part of it. So it's coming together to, to have the building here alone, you know, to have all your information here for people to be able to come in and get it, um, to have the phone line to be, you know, the one-stop shop of Charlevoix. People call us wondering what day is trash day, where can they pay their utility bill? What are some good contractors in the area? Where can I get my eyes checked? You know, we get all of those questions all here. Yeah, you're, you're kind of like, well, a phone directory too. I mean, we don't, I, 
no, most people don't have, um, you know, a phone book in their, in their car or their, you know, at home anymore. So they just call the chamber. Exactly. And I know I've taught, we've had this conversation before of the phone calls you guys field yeah. for just about everything, exactly. um, which is, which is great because if you're not a chamber member, it's hard for the chamber to send people to exactly. you. Exactly. Yep. We need to, yeah, yeah, just having your information and knowing you're out there and knowing, you know, not even just knowing, yes, you're a plumber, but knowing what you specialize in or what, you know, what you're able to do, if you're able to take on more clients, if there's specific clients you look for, you know, those are all questions that we like to ask when a member joins. And when we check in with members, yeah. you know, what are the clients that you're looking for? Or what's the challenge that you're facing right now so that we can really tailor those referrals and also just know sure. as things come up, hey, I remember talking to this one business, they were looking at that in particular, yep. I'm going to shoot this over to them so they have the resource. Yeah, that's great. All right, we're going to go for a quick ad break. And then we will jump back on to learn more about what types of programs and networking events Chamber of Commerces offer. A quick shout out to our sponsor, Keep It Real Social, an award-winning marketing agency. They're not just marketers, but storytellers making your business shine. Thanks to Keep It Real Social for empowering us and our listeners in the digital world. For your digital marketing solutions, check out keepitrealsocial.com. Back to Small Biz Big Wins for more insights and inspiration. All right. Well, welcome back. Today, our guest is Sarah Van Horn. She is the president of the Charlevoix Area Chamber of Commerce, and she's giving us the lowdown on what a Chamber of Commerce is, why you should join. Um, just we're having this great conversation, and I hope that you are getting a lot out of it. But I want to ask Sarah a few more questions. So Sarah, tell us about what types of programs, networking events, your specific chamber offers and how these actually directly impact your members or that they've told you, we love this, this, we're getting more business out of this. Yes. And uh, to that point too, you know, I'll go over some of our events, but we really have each event serves a unique purpose and hits a different market or hits a different reason for hosting it. So um, mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of go in, in order of our calendar year because that's how we think. And that's, you know, we lay it out for the year <laughs> and that's one at a time as we that's take good. it. But um, one of the big events that we host each year is our annual community awards. And it's really just a celebration of Charlevoix and celebrating those who are working so hard to have a business here and do good and contribute to the community. Um, it's, you know, it's got networking to it too, but it really is a time just to celebrate. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to have a, an exact, um, you know, business to client focus at this event. It's really just sure. coming together and celebrating. So we have different awards that we give out each year, uh, ranging from a customer service award. We recognize a new business of the year. Um, so a business that opened in the last year that went above and beyond or has brought some unique and innovative things to the community. We celebrate an outstanding citizen of the year and um, we, let's see, there's business of the year. So those are businesses who really are just, you know, they might be around for 30 years, 40 years, 20 years, but they're just doing something really unique or they're meeting challenges in a different way, or they just overall contribute to the community, um, you know, endlessly through sponsorships or, or staff time and things like that. Um, we recognize a young professional each year. So someone that is, you know, up and coming in their professional career and starting to get involved in a lot of different things. So that's, that's a fun event. It's just a really good, feel good, celebrate Charlevoix. We, we talk about the chamber and what we work on each year and let people know, you know, this is what your dollars are doing. This is what your, your time and your resources are, are doing for the community. Um, so that one comes up. Kind of a year end yeah. party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Almost, yep. Yeah. It's uh, so yeah. we have that one coming up next month. Um, Another event that we do and a lot of chambers host uh, business expos and, you know, it's a traditional trade show in the sense that it's an opportunity for a business to have a booth and showcase what they offer for products and services to the public. Mm -hmm. So it's a one stop shop. Uh, the public can come in and go through all the booths and see, you know, what what is available in the area for restaurants, for chiropractors, for um, mm -hmm. home improvement opportunities, you know, car dealerships, sure. things like that. And our expo in particular, we pair with our Taste of Charlevoix event. So we have different restaurants will have a booth and they will provide um, samples. And then we kind of have a little friendly competition. People vote on it. And each year we crown, you know, a Taste of Charlevoix winner. Um, and it, it, it really is just nice because it's an opportunity for restaurants to come in one place and someone to try different things um, from different restaurants. Yeah. 
Well, and you get to you get to taste a little bit mm-hmm. of you know taste of Charlevoix, like you said, and then you get to learn about businesses. Exactly. It's kind of a win. Yeah, yep. And that one, um, you know, that's really beneficial, especially if you're a new business um, that is just looking to get your word out there to people in the public. Um, you know, and you want to be that face and let them know you as the business owner versus just putting an ad somewhere. So it's a good opportunity for sure. that. Um, it's a good opportunity to hand out swag items that people look at or they have in their offices and they get, sure. you know, they go along their path and people keep that pen and they see that business. So, um, yeah, it's a good spot. It's a great way to market yourself as, as a business owner to other small businesses, but to the community that attends. Yes, exactly. Is it pretty common for Chamber of Commerces to offer these types, these two types of events? Yeah, yep. Um, so the business expos are pretty common. Um, usually smaller chambers might not host them because they do take a lot of staff time um, and a lot to mm, put okay. it together. But um, your midsize and then your larger chambers will usually host those. And then um, okay. annual awards, I think most chambers do that in some fashion. Um, it's it's a nice way to celebrate some people that are going above and beyond in the community. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And then let's see what else we have coming up. Uh, we have a golf outing, a good, just old fashioned fun time for people to get out friendly competition and network. Um, <laughs> a lot of chambers host golf outings. Um, ironically, the during the pandemic, golf outings were one of the only events you could host because they were outside. So because of the distance yes, too. Exactly. I love it. Yeah. You don't have to be right up to somebody. <laughs> yep. So those did really well during the pandemic and kind of had a comeback for a lot of people. And, you know, in Charlevoix too, uh, our local Rotary does a golf outing. Our football team does a golf outing, mm-hmm. which is, you know, people like to do that here and, and like to have that friendly, friendly sure. round of golf. Um, yeah. And that's just good for networking and team building really. You know, it's your, your company will get a team and it's a chance for those four people to just have a day together. Um, and, you know, kind of have that little benefit of of work time out in the sun, play time too. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. It's, it's at networking. Yeah. I mean, which I, like I referenced yeah. at the beginning, how important it is, you know, for you to network with other small business owners so they can refer you, they know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So those golf outings, these, you know, even if you don't golf, I know a lot of people don't golf mm-hmm. and they still attend and they have a blast. Exactly. Yep. Uh, we had someone show up last year, never golfed before. She was wearing sandals, but she wanted to come and be on the team. So <laughs> she made it work. Hey. Yeah. And now nobody's going to forget exactly. that she showed up yep, at a golf exactly. outing with sandals yep. on. <laughs> knew who she was. It was great. Yeah. Um, I love it. Yeah. And then, uh, I'll highlight kind of one of our other staple events and then some other like community events that we do, um, we host a state of the community and a lot of chambers do this in some fashion. It's uh, an educational event. So this is a a good place for people to come and learn what's going on in the different facets of your community. So ours in particular, we usually feature things like the hospital or our local townships or municipality leaders, school systems, the sheriff's office or the police department. Um, Here in Charlevoix, we often have a little write-up from our Coast Guard because we have a Coast Guard station. So it's just neat for people, um, business owners and residents alike, to hear, you know, how's the hospital doing? What What's on their docket for the sure. year? How are the school systems doing? What's enrollment like? Um, what kind of infrastructure upgrades is the city planning this year? Uh, you know, things like that. So I always really like that event. It's really just a, a good educational luncheon to hear all the different facets of some of those big players in the community and what makes it, you know, somewhere that we're able to live knowing that we have a hospital here that our school systems are thriving. Um, Is this open to anybody in the community or just chamber? It's open to anyone in the community. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, so that's a great uh, that's a great avenue for a small business owner to not only learn about what's happening in their backyard, but to network with other community members and then community members to learn more about businesses. But like you said, what what are the different Mm -hmm. um, things in the community? What's happening with them? Ask questions. It's not really political, Mm -hmm. but it's more educational. Yeah. And it's really a good chance. What I like about these types of events is that you know, we're all in the room together hearing the same story and hearing the challenges. So we're able to then go after that event and say, hey, do you remember we were all at that state of the community and we heard that the hospital is facing a nursing shortage? What can we all do to address this? Or we saw the enrollment numbers of the school system and we saw that they're looking for this type of program to add. How can we help do that? So it's nice to me, you know, we can all hear those things separately, but if we're all in the same room, 
and we all hear yeah. it, that's how we then start generating these solutions on some of these bigger issues. Yeah. No, I love that. So, you know, I know um, probably small business owners or community members are listening to this. And if you ever wonder what is that state of the community, um, you know, luncheon that's taking place or you have something similar in your area that it's probably something worth your time going Mm -hmm. to. Exactly. Yeah. And you always think, you know, you know, the president does a state of the union every year, you know, the governors do a state of the state every year, and then it's up to our chambers to do the state of the community every year. So it, it really just brings it home. And, and we're happy to be that, uh, that role to, to fill that and provide that for the community. That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah, along the lines of networking, um, we host business after hours events throughout the year. Most chambers do this. And that really is just networking Mm -hmm. at its core. It's a chance to come together at a restaurant or a new venue or an office and have some food, some beverages and meet new people, uh, meet existing people and, you know, just talk about what's going on uh, with your business. And there's really normally no formal agenda to those other than just come in, have some food, talk to people, meet people. And what I like to say at those two, um, because they, I think one of the points you made in your intro too, is it can be daunting to jump into networking events if you don't already have those connections. So that's where, you know, use your chamber staff, you know, we're putting on those events, but we don't want you just to come and not feel comfortable, you know, come up to us and say, Hey, I'm new here. I'm trying to meet in particular. It'd be great if there's anyone here in the banking world or anyone here that also provides Mm -hmm. a health service, you know, I'd like to get to meet some of those connections. And then we're here to say, hey, you know, that person might be a good person for you to meet or let me go make that introduction for you. Um, I love that to actually utilize your chamber staff, you know, make the most of the networking event, but to do that by utilizing. And I know that a lot of the business after hours events, you can host it if you're Mm -hmm. a restaurant or a new business, which is a great way to get the word out there about what you do. Um, You can oftentimes sponsor. So whether that's having a booth there Mm -hmm. or, you know, sponsoring in some way. So if the networking, maybe you're leery about going in yourself as a small business owner, you could have your business kind of have a booth or lead with that. Mm -hmm. So people have to kind of come up to you and talk to you, Exactly. um, which sponsorships is basically what helps put on these great events. Exactly. Yes. So tied to all of these (laughs) events are sponsorships and that does help us put them on. Um, And it also helps, uh, you know, further your membership investment. You know, it does it, it's a little more financial resources to give a little more promotion and opportunity. And like you said, they sure. usually come with speaking opportunities. So you get the stage, you get the platform, or you get the the logo or the banner put up so that people see you and can come to you, um, you know, as opposed to just relying on, you know, working the crowd and trying to get that done. So, sure. yep. So yeah. So it's a great way to increase your visibility. And I think to help the chamber work for you a little bit more, you know, to get the most out of your membership. Exactly. Um, Yeah. So those are, those are a lot of the business focused events. And then the other side of the spectrum, um, which I'm happy we're in a community that, that has these opportunities um, are community events. So these are the feel good ones just to get people out, get people shopping, get people downtown. Um, And, you know, one of our favorites is our holiday parade. And I will say, you know, chambers sometimes get some flack for, you know, being a parade chamber or they just host little parades and events. But, you know, if no one does it, if a chamber's not around, we're uniquely qualified to host those. And, you know, it it does make people feel good about where they live and it adds to the quality of life, which is all in the cycle of people wanting to live here and have a business here. (laughs) Totally. Well, and I think hosting those fun events, like it also gives the the chamber members have an opportunity when these fun events are being held like the parade to be a sponsor Mm -hmm. um but also if the if your business is on the parade route you have an opportunity that you know the chamber is spending the time advertising promoting the parade getting people to come into the area that's your job to capitalize Mm -hmm. on that and to get people to come into your business so offer a special advertise that you're going to be open during the parade because i do hear people say well, you know, like I'm not usually open during those times. Well, open your doors. Like this is the chance for you to, to capitalize on something that the chamber is doing. That's fun for the community. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. And, um, yeah, that's really, you know, we, we put our time into hosting these and we're, you know, the, the convener to be able to do the marketing, put it together to house, you know, get the people lined up, get it all in order. Um, so make the most of it, you know, come out, participate, have your Absolutely. doors open, run some specials. You know, we can we can do everything to get people into town. Um, 
and we do our best to get them into your doors. But really, our job is getting yep. them here and, you know, do what you can to get people in the doors. So, um, absolutely. Yeah, I'm happy, you know, we're in that size community where it makes sense for us to be able to host those events. Uh, if you get into some mm-hmm. of the bigger communities, it might not be the chamber that hosts that. They might have a downtown development authority or a Main Street group or sure. a group of volunteers. And that's, you know, great too. It, it all depends on the community size. But, yeah, I'm happy that we get to to own and run some of those, and we partner with our yeah. downtown development authority to do that. Um, they help contribute their time and resources as well to help us put those on. That's awesome! A fun, a fun feel good event for the community. Exactly. Yep. So we do the parade, we do an Easter egg hunt, we do sidewalk sales in the summer, um, open house in the winter, and a hot cocoa contest. And we get some of the restaurants into the stores and doing hot cocoa friendly competition That's again. Fun. Always get a, a winner at the end. People vote and get the, <laughs> the title for the year of the hot cocoa contest winner. And those are, again just feel good. Uh, get people in town. Get them in your stores. Um, and you know, get people activities to do, especially in the off season. Yeah. And again, like you said, your job is to get people to, to the businesses, to market, whatever, but it's up to the businesses to take that next Mm -hmm. step, that full advantage. You know, if you don't participate in these, then you can't really complain that they're not working for you. Yeah. And we're here, you know, use us for that. You know, that's, you know, chambers, we put on these events, but we also can come up with ideas or find the right avenues for you too. So say you are a business and, you know, you're new and you're you're not sure what the event is. How do I make the most of it? What are some things that other businesses do? What do you see works? What doesn't, Um, you know, talk to us, use us for that too. Yeah. No, I I consistently heard you to kind of say those things like use us, Mm -hmm. like ask us, talk to us. The chamber employees are here to help small businesses. I mean, that's, that's why you're doing what you're doing. That's the point of the chamber. And so Mm -hmm. if you're not sure to reach out, you're there. Yes, exactly. And we do our best um, to proactively reach out. We know that our young or our our small business owners, they are juggling a lot of things. They're wearing a lot of hats. They have a lot of different subscriptions and memberships and associations that they're probably trying to juggle. So, um, you know, use us as best you can and we'll, we'll do our best to get out to you as well. Yeah, no, that's good. So what are some resources that the chamber um, offers for small business owners that are listening? Like often, I mean, that maybe Charlevoix specifically offers, but that generally um, a small business owner listening, no matter where they are, their chamber most likely has these types of resources or connections to Mm -hmm. these types of resources. Yes. So I think the big thing that we offer is the connection to the resource. So we might not have the answer here, but we know who does. So we can be your one-stop shop, your go-to resource. Um, You call us and you're looking for a grant or you're looking for loan opportunities or or startup equity, you know, things like that. Um, The chamber might not have the loan program within our operations, but we know the three or four companies or organizations that offer these low interest startup loans that we can point you to and let you know, this is the person to contact here. Um, This is the type of program that they're running. These ones might apply to you or here are some grant opportunities. So we kind of have, you know, the overall, our little notebook of resources, you know, of different organizations that do different things and can connect you to planning commissions, township supervisors, Mm -hmm. when you need to get variances or go through zoning, or how do you get a business license? You know, we are come to us and we'll answer those questions and point you in the right direction, give you the names, the phone numbers of who to reach out to. So really, the Chamber of Commerce are your small business connectors. Mm -hmm. We are connector and convener. Yes. (laughs) That, that is a great way to think of a chamber of commerce. And I think a lot of people might think of sometimes chambers as um, more marketing. Mm-hmm. And I, while you definitely do a lot of marketing for small business owners and help small business owners market themselves, you really are a connector and, and helping them, you know, connect to one another, to connect to um, other resources. So that is great. Now, do a lot of Chamber of Commerces offer like continuing education op- opportunities or again, is it just connecting to education opportunities. Yeah. Um, we offer different programming, um, you know, especially like my, our neighboring chamber in Petoskey, they're really great at this. And, um, you know, I always look to them because they have such great lineup of programming. And, and that's one thing I'll say about chambers too, is we all 
um, work together really well because we know, you know, we're we're not competition. We're all working for our sure. communities in the best way that we can. And we share a lot of resources and we're, mm. we're always low on time because we have a million things we want to do as a staff. <laughs> chamber. We have a lot of members wanting us to do different things. So uh, we use other chambers and we rip off and duplicate and, and use each other sure. as we can and, and make the most of our time. But um, yeah, so we offer, you know, a lot of programming that is, um, educational in the sense of like little seminars, or um, we might have like a seminar lineup where we have different, you know, there might be a, a class about marketing or a class about SEO mm-hmm. management or a class about customer service. Um, mm. There's different things like that. Our chamber uh, before the pandemic, we usually would host once a year, um, a, a sort of one day or half day training opportunity, whether it was focused just on one topic like customer service, it might also feature two or three breakouts of different things. Um, and we haven't quite brought that back since the pandemic, but sure. I know Petoskey Chamber, they're a great one where they have things like the Connecting Women in Business program, mm-hmm. and they can have you know this cohort of women business leaders come together and they might have topics similar to that, you know, different training opportunities each time that they get together. So again, if it's something that your Chamber of Commerce doesn't offer, oftentimes if you go to them and you're saying, I'm looking for a training on you know, Google or I'm looking for a training on customer service or whatever it might be, mm-hmm. either you're going to connect them to the small business that offers it or you're going to connect them to, hey, the Petoskey Regional Chamber of Commerce, you know, X number of miles away is offering this or this chamber has an online program. So again, you're you're doing that connecting if you're not offering that service yourself. Now, this brings up um, a question that just popped into my head. Mm-hmm. So how, can anybody become a chamber member? So like I can join the Charleroi Chamber of Commerce and I can join the Petoskey Regional Chamber of Commerce and I can join the Gaylord Chamber of Commerce. And mm-hmm. I mean, what qualifies me for joining a chamber as a small business owner? Yeah. So it really is open to anyone doing or operating business in your footprint. So each chamber okay. is usually established with a set of bylaws and that might distinguish where their service area is or where they would accept members from. Um, but for the most part, if you're doing business in our area, um, you're, you're able to join. Um, or we also, our chamber, we have um, a friend of Charlevoix opportunity where you might not be a business owner anymore. You might be retired, but you still want to be involved and network and kind of just lend your experience and your knowledge. Sure. So you don't have a, a business per se, but you want to be involved. So we have a friend of Charlevoix mm-hmm. level too, and that's open for anyone in our community. Um, good to know. Good to know. So so, yeah, you are a small business, you know, there and you do business in multiple different counties Mm -hmm. or areas. There's an opportunity to be a part of multiple chambers of commerce as well. Yep. And yeah, so like our, our bylaws for the Charleroi chamber, you know, we kind of designate, um, our, you know, target service area might be Antrim, Charlevoix, Emmett, um, Sheboygan, Otsego counties. And we, you know, members, businesses within that footprint is general membership, but we have members that are just outside of that, but they still do business here or they have connections Mm -hmm. here, or they might have, you know, we have a realtor who has an office here and an office downstate and they do business in both. So they're a member of our chamber and another chamber. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So, like, keep it real social. We're a member of the Charlevoix Regional Chamber of Commerce, the Petoskey Regional Chamber of Commerce, and the Brighton Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Brighton also has South Lion and a few other chambers, kind of Hamburg yeah. and a, yeah. a bunch of chambers, kind of in the Brighton Chamber. But yeah. we have offices and businesses, and we operate in those, you know, um, geographical areas. So it makes mm-hmm. sense for us as a small business owner to participate in those Chamber of Commerces, where mm-hmm. it wouldn't if I were joining you know, Grand Rapids right now. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yep. You want to join, you know, as your business, as you're making that decision, you want to look to, you know, what areas are you targeting more clients in or what areas do you serve where you want to get the word out? And that might just be one community. It might be where you live or it might be communities around you uh, where you want to get, you know, travel around and more, more business. Yeah. Important to, important things to consider. So (laughs) now do Chamber of Commerce's advocate for small businesses, like in, in any way influence public policy? Yes. So, um, and again, this goes back to the, you know, if you've seen one chamber, you've seen one chamber. So some might not and <laughs> others do. Um, okay. We are actively involved in that in our um, 
I guess we do it in the form of an alliance with other chambers mm-hmm. because we're all small communities in rural northern Michigan. So our voice in Lansing is maybe this big alone. But if we okay. join in with, uh, you know, five, six, seven other chambers in our region, our voice amplifies and we now represent sure. more businesses. So, so uh, collective yep. voice. When exactly. You to... Yep. So that's at a state level. We work uh, with our Northern Michigan Chamber Alliance. It is um, up to 17 now different chambers and economic development organizations. So we, you know, pretty much from Manistee down to, um, like Traverse City, Manistee, Gaylord, Alpena, Marquette up in the UP. And we all come together to then, you know, we have a lot of the same interests. We're all rural Mm -hmm. Michigan and we want Lansing and those making the decisions at a state level to know what we need in our neck of the woods. So we come together, um, you know, and it's not direct lobbying when it comes to influencing decisions, it's building those relationships. So we come together, we work with the legislators that span our footprint, and we say, here here are the issues that our businesses are facing. This is what our residents are facing. These are the infrastructure needs that our community needs Mm -hmm. to be able to thrive. What can we do at a state level to um, get dollars put up here, get attention put up here? What opportunities are there? And we do that at a state level uh, through that partnership. And then I think at its core, you know, chambers within their community than Mm -hmm. work uh, locally with with public issues. You know, I go to city council meetings, I go to township meetings when there's something on the docket that is going to impact businesses or just impact the community. You know, what's what are what where's the city putting their tax dollars when it comes to new infrastructure or repaving parking lots, um, putting in new parking meters? What are the rules going to be? Sorry. noon bell That's okay you hear that we might need to okay go. <laughs> no you're good well this is this is an example of a small community so yes. you have a noon bell so we have those a of you listening, <laughs> yes those of you listening in a large city might not be accustomed to the noon bell but in Charlevoix yes. Michigan there is a noon bell and, and it, we are <laughs> right next door to it <laughs> oh my god I love it no I love it I love it so yep. this what I like about this um I don't think a lot of small businesses realize that the chambers advocate to and try to influence public policy. And I love how you're how you brought up the point that you're collectively doing it. You're working with economic development groups um, and so that you have a larger voice when you go together collectively all on the same page to Mm -hmm. talk to the legislators who then are going down to Lansing and they can think of this collective group and this economic development. Um, What are some issues like facing a lot of like facing this alliance currently that you guys are discussing with legislators? Yeah. So one of the big ones that we did this last year um, was came, came down to labor laws. So there were changes getting put into effect. Um, even minimum wage was looking at changing tipped wages. Um, so what tipped workers work in restaurants, they get a certain wage and then their tips make up the rest of their wage. Uh, there was a bill that wanted to change that and make everyone on a, you know, kind of eliminate tipped wages in, in a sense. Um, okay. And then labor laws, as it came to, um, there's a bill out there allowing municipalities to be able to put their own rules in place of minimum wage or how, you know, hours that people were required to work. And wow, there. So you know, being down there, so we came together and said, "Look, if you have each municipality able to make these laws, there's going to be a patchwork across the state of what a, a company needs to expect when they're going to work somewhere. So if you're going yeah. to set up a headquarters somewhere, they might have these laws in place. But if you then have workers coming from somewhere else, they might have these laws in place. And it just really wasn't thought out well. Um, And also a lot of our, you know, we talked to our Northern Michigan municipalities and most of them don't want that responsibility. They don't want to have to to figure out different labor laws. They want that to be at a state level and and let people do their business here. Um, And then the the tipped worker one, you know, a lot of our tipped workers rely on those tips and you you get a higher wage in in the end. And a lot of people didn't want to give that up yet. Um, So we were trying to be that voice for businesses. You know, we I might come in and I'm one person, but we have to remember and what I always frame when I begin speaking at a podium at a public meeting, you know, I'm Sarah Van Horn. I'm from the Chamber of Commerce. I'm representing 400 businesses with my voice right now, 
Or mm-hmm. if I'm you know, particular at a local issue, I say I have 20 members in this township and this is what is important to them um, because those business owners can't be there. They don't have time to come to a meeting. Sure. They're working in their business. They're working on their payroll. They're working on all the things that they need to do. Yeah. So they can't be at a public meeting. And that's where those resources coming together, helping to keep a staff here so that I can go to those meetings and be that voice for those members. That I love that you brought, I love that we are discussing this right now, really, because I think small business owners could utilize their chamber of commerces more when there are certain issues that are impacting them. And Mm -hmm. if you don't know about it, or you don't know that there's a specific problem, it's hard for you to address it or to go to this, you know, alliance and this these economic development groups and have those discussions. So, you know, for small business owners that are chamber members to utilize their chamber that way, um, exactly. I think is important too. Yes. Yep. We, we did a lot of work the last few years just trying to make sure that members know to use us for that. Yeah. And, you know, there's always a balance. We have to be careful if it's a... a politically charged issue or if there's one side or another, but for the most part, most of the things that members need from us are benefits to all members. So, you know, we go to a planning commission meeting and say, look, the sign ordinance that you have doesn't allow our members to have like properly lit or sized signs so people can't see their business. So how can we work Mm. together and make this fitting for the community? We know we don't want billboards across downtown, but how do we make it so that this business that has an off street location can still have the same signage and get people through their doors. You know, it's it's really is that win win. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, The advocacy I think is something that a lot of small business owners um, aren't, they might not be aware of. And so Mm -hmm. I think, yes, you've done a lot of work on it, but if anyone's listening that this is really important, you know, um, resource for them is the advocacy of their chamber and what you guys are working for. And I love Mm -hmm. the example that you gave of that you stand up and you're, you know, you're representing 400 members or 20 in this township. So Mm -hmm. because that you, you're trying to be that voice for small businesses. Exactly. Yeah. And that and, ranges and, from from direct needs for signage to um, housing developments, trying to make sure that people understand the zoning throughout town. How can it be more friendly to encourage development? How can it be more friendly for people to build duplexes or triplexes to house people to work here or be more friendly for our businesses who want to upgrade their storefronts and, you know, the restrictions that they have to fall between. How does that affect their dollar amount? It's all all in the broad scheme of how can we make it easier and better for businesses and families to live here, to prosper, thrive, make our community a good place. <laughs> That's the job of your chamber. So for it any is. small yeah. business owner listening, What advice would you give them to help them get the most out of their chamber membership? Yes. So I think first step, come in and talk to us or give us a call and um, be open, you know, not be afraid to to share what exactly you need and what you're looking for, you know, what you're expecting out of a chamber so that we can both work together and make sure that we know we're delivering what you need and that we're setting the right expectations for both your business and what we're able to provide. Um, And, Keep us informed, you know, throughout your membership, not even as a new business, sure. you know, you're 10, mem- 10 years into your membership. Uh, you know, we see you at networking events. We stop in. Don't be afraid to say, hey, look, this year I've been really struggling with inventory coming on the trucks. The roads aren't good enough mm-hmm. and they're getting caught up in with these licensing issues or whatever the, the thing may be. Um, or my staff is having a hard time finding a place to live. You know, we want to know what the barriers are. Um each year as you have them, you know, it's just all comes together because then we hear that from four or five different members. We know we can go down that path and figure out how are we going to make this better for everyone. Yeah, to definitely, I think, communicate. That's great mm-hmm. advice. And and I know working with sm- so many small businesses, um, we'll hear from small business owners, well, yeah, I pay the membership fee, but this year I'm looking at my budget. I'm not really sure. And once we start having those conversations, like, well, how are you utilizing the chamber? Well, you're not you're not putting anything in the newsletter. Oh, there's a newsletter or you're not, you know, attending the events. And then, you know, once they start realizing, okay, I joined and there's all of these opportunities for me, they're most of the time not taking full advantage. Exactly. And like you said, they aren't communicating with you. Yeah. And we know, we know you're all, our small business owners have a million things that they're trying to juggle. So yes. even if you have an idea of how to make it easier for you so that we can better deliver that, we want to hear that too. Um, you sure. know, we want 
you to make the most of the membership. You need to take the lead on what you need from us, but then we also are here and we want to be proactive and make sure that we're following up with you and, and doing what we can to make it easy for you to take advantage of the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Charlevoix Chamber does a really great job at that. So give Thank yourself you. a pat on the back. I will. <laughs> so Thank Sarah, you. I ask um, all my guests one last question, and that is to share a big win in business. And you're not a small business owner yourself, but you work with 400 plus small businesses and you've worked with, a, you know, with in small business before. Maybe you can share a big win that relates to a small business being a chamber member. Yeah. So I'll share an example. Um, and ironically, uh, this business is not a member yet, but they came in to have the conversation. And that's one thing I'll say too, is, you know, even if you're not ready to become a member, come in and talk to us and we're willing to help and we're going to do what we can. We want you to have a successful business. Yes. There's certain benefits that are allocated to members, but we still want to help you. Sure. So, um, yeah, so I'll say this, you know, we have, a, a building that, um, has been vacant for a couple months. It's a large footprint. And we have someone who is a, a local, uh, moved here a couple of years ago, and he's putting all he can into an indoor field house for Charlevoix. He oh. wants an indoor turf field, soccer field. He wants kids to have a place to go in the winter to play soccer, um, to get active, use some of their energy up. And um, so this is a big undertaking and he, you know, he's not ready to jump into membership yet. And that's fine because he just wants a place to start. You know, where, where can I get the word out? How can we make this work? Yeah. And him coming in, having that conversation with me, the two days later, I was at an event in Traverse City and talking to a group that does small business loans uh, for startups. And they're looking for Charlevoix people who are looking to start a business. So wow. I, was like, hey, I have someone for you that just came in looking to get their project launched. They're pretty much at the max of what they're able to spend with their own dollars and they need that next step. Um, and they're looking for how to do that. So I was mm -hmm. able to make that connection. And then a couple days later, someone came into the office who just moved here to take care of his mom. He comes from Colorado and he was a soccer coach out there. He loves playing soccer. So he's looking for things like that. Hey, uh, gentleman is looking to start a turf field. He was so excited. He wants to go help. He wants to do whatever he can. He's oh got time. God. And so he put him, put him in contact with that. And hopefully he's going to be there helping him too, you know, and he's, he doesn't have, you know, a, a grant or a loan or financial capacity, sure. but he's like, Hey, I've got time. I moved here. I love yeah. this. This is exciting. I might want to get involved in this. So, yeah. Yeah. What, uh, that is a huge win in relation in, in the how you connect people in relationships. So just coming into the chamber office, picking up the phone, making that connection, building that relationship with you in the chamber. So when the field house opens, <laughs> you, you're ready, you know, you have that budget to become a member, then you can take full advantage. But the fact that they made that connection and then mm -hmm. you were in that started that relationship with you. And then now they are able to, you know, that just flourished from there and that you were able to connect them to, to more people is that's a great, that's a big win. That's a very yeah, big it was, win. It was and it's rewarding for me to see that. And, you know, sure. I, I hear of these programs and these grant opportunities and things like that, but then to yeah. run into the person who's looking specifically for a Charlevoix startup after I just talked to one and, and they're, you know, they like doing things in the recreational and, you know, things that are going to get kids out and families out. And it's just, all those coming together. Yep. Like, this is hopefully it works. And this is why I do what I do. And even if they don't use each other's services, you know, I made that connection and it all yep. came together because I was able to know, know the information and know the person to talk yep. to. <laughs> yep. I love this. So, and this is ending on a great note, Sarah, because for any small business owner who is not taking full advantage of their membership or they're not a part of their local chamber, this is really a testament to why it's important to pick up the phone or stop into your local chamber office and see what they can do for you and learn about the membership opportunities. Um, give them some information about your business. Tell them what you're looking for. And um, again, make that connection because the connection will grow to the networking and to the marketing and kind of just flourish from there. So yes. thank you so much, Sarah, for thank all you. your information. Yeah, oh thank gosh, you. I love it. This has been great. Well, 
I'm going to put some show uh, links in the show notes for how you connect with the uh, Michigan Chamber of Commerce, uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, um, the to connect with Sarah if you are local and in the Charlevoix area, um, and so that you have a little bit more information on Chamber of Commerces and how you can get involved. Um, and if you can please take a moment to subscribe to Small Biz Big Wins um, on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever it is you might listen. And if you would leave us a review, we would greatly appreciate it. And a comment goes a long ways. It helps other uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners find our podcast. So until next week, have a good one. And thanks again for tuning in.